If you've ever wanted to hold the power of a train horn in your hand, then this is the perfect video for you. So everyone's build will be a little bit different, but um, for the one I built, here's everything I use uh, to build this train horn gun. First of all, you're obviously going to need some form of a ideally old drill or impact that you can easily get apart and uh, get to the wiring and everything with that. Um, and I'll explain why I like to use old ones here in a second. But then, obviously, your horns. Um, I have a multi-horn setup, um, all running off one single compressor. I have bigger compressors. I have different compressors. Uh, for size and efficiency, I found that uh, these little red guys actually put out quite a bit of air for their size. Um, obviously you need some tubing. I have a whole extra roll here. I got from home Depot. Um, I, this is the stuff that came with them. Usually won't work if you're doing a, you know, custom setup uh, or isn't long enough. So I like to have a little extra. Um, I picked this up just cause I always lose these guys. The terminal kits is like between six and $9 at home Depot. Some extra wiring if you want to, um, Various sets of pliers to uh, hold nuts and bolts and uh, wiring during the job. Uh, I have a ratcheting screwdriver for when I'm trying to be careful, an impact for when I'm not, and a drill to mount into the housing of your drill, uh, drill bit. The lighter is actually to heat up the tubing so that it slides on to the terminals. Let's see if I can get that in there. Yeah, these... These little air fitting terminals right there. And then uh, as far as hardware goes, uh, I, I picked up a whole bunch of quarter by 20, one, and a, one to one and a quarter, one and a half inch bolts. Um, I have various sets. And then obviously matching hex nuts, a handful of uh, lock washers, some mending plates, some L brackets, just depending on how you want to uh, match everything up. The socket set does come in handy. Um, just for being able to tighten everything down and making sure your horns don't go anywhere while they're affixed to obviously a drill that's going to be handheld and moving around a lot. Um, one other thing, if you're not using a single horn setup, like if you have more than one fitting entry, you're going to need some type of T-splitter. And they don't, they probably do, but I wasn't able to immediately find one. And I, so I just went to my local hardware store and picked up a PEX 3 8 inch T fitting and I found that that takes the uh, three inch tubing and you're able to split off of it pretty effectively and I'll show you how I've gone and done that there's different ways you could split off to get different sounds if you have a multi horn setup so first things first you're going to want to remove the housing of let's say uh, the drill you pick once you do that you're going to be left with three main parts your battery terminals your trigger and your motor and chuck assembly. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is remove this motor and chuck assembly from the housing. And as you see, I've already clipped my ground, ground and power wire so that you're just left with ground and power. Now from here, you can kinda get an idea with take your, your um, compressor and see just how well that's going to fit up and as you can see it, it fits pretty decent actually in the housing but not perfect it still doesn't quite sit all the way um, and what you would do in that sense or in that case is you would kind of machine down file this stuff down maybe sand it down uh, I've, I've melted it down taken you know a hot file and kind of molded this so that it fits a little bit better and that's one way to do it the other thing to consider is how you plan on mounting your horns. So in this case, um, it could either be on top, from the back, 
there's a lot of ways you can go about doing that. Now, I was fortunate enough to have the option of, do I want to do this to an impact or a drill? I chose the impact because it immediately fit the compressor. Where'd it go? There it is. Just a little bit better in this housing with no trimming. And when I close, close this up, it is incredibly snug and holds it pretty well perfect without adhesive. So I can take this apart, work on it, uh, do how to videos and whatnot again and again. The other thing I noticed was the only difference is this impact has a single thick wall, whereas the drill has kind of a fan attachment or uh, kind of like to hold the back little rotating assembly there on the back of that motor. Um, and it's just a little bit thicker and harder to get through. So when you take your mounting bolt, you don't have much sticking out and it doesn't quite, quite want to sit flat on there. So it's not really going to mount very well. Whereas on this, you have plenty to stick off of and it's got a hard flat surface that you can mount to. Now, I chose to mount to the back uh, mainly because of the way these vents were set up on the top of this impact, as well as my initial mount coming as an L shape. And when it sat on there, it just sat so high, I, I really didn't like the look of it. So I chose to mount on the back and uh, it seems to work pretty well. It holds it very tight. The horns don't, don't shake around. Um, but what I did have to do uh, when I chose to add more horns was get a longer mounting bolt um, and then kind of finesse those other two onto the mount. And I'll do a time lapse of putting this whole thing together and how I set it up um, here in a second. So from here, let's say you have your impact open and you're too hot and ground exposed, what you're going to do is, and in a lot of cases, you'll be able to take your, your motor and put your two uh, crimping pieces, uh, attachments that go to the two hot leads, the hot and the, sorry, the hot and the negative, hot and ground, and you figure those out and you'll be able to hook them up. In some cases, that's where the extra wire comes. You're going to need to take little crimp butts and attach them, get a little bit of extra wire there, attach your ends, and then you set up negative to negative, positive to positive, and then you kind of figure out the orientation you want it to sit, and also where your outlet hose is going to be, because you, you got to get a hose to run to your horns, and you don't want it to run right back into the housing. So I found mine sits pretty well like this, you then tuck your wires down in, and at this point, now that you have every hook, everything hooked up, you take a battery, hook it up to your terminals, and make sure the compressor kicks on. It does. So from here, ready to close everything up, and make sure that your compressor is buttoned down pretty well. And from the looks of it, it is. So next, you're actually going to unplug your compressor now that you know it fits and is in good working order. And it's time to determine how you want to mount your horns. Like I said, I took the, my regular L-shaped bracket that I had, put it in a vise and flattened it out because I want to mount mine on the back. Now to do that, I knew I was going to need some type of post coming out of the back of this. So I took a quarter inch by, I want to say one and a quarter, one and a half. And this is where my impact or drill and drill bit comes in. You're going to want to find a drill bit just ever so slightly, if not exactly the same size, 
as your bolt um, to make your holes. Now that you have your drill bit, you're going to want to put everything back together without the compressor in it. And I left all my screws in just to make it a little quicker. You're going to want to tighten those down. And for explanation's sake, I'm not going to do that. But at that point, you're going to want to kind of mock up where the horns look best and where they're most strongly secured. So from right here, I determine my mounting point. You're then going to want to take a Sharpie and mark those two holes so you can then remove your horn and if possible pull your wires out of the way and then try and come in as straight as possible drill your two holes I then lay my whole assembly back out. I always have one screw that likes to stick. There we go. Come on. And then you're going to take your bolt, and if you did it right, it's borderline going to thread into that hole. Both of mine do, and I don't like to do it by hand, so I throw my, my socket and my attachment into my impact, and shove them through that hole. Same thing on the other side. Keep track of all your screws. Take your other bolt. Get it started. And now you have something that looks like that. And this is pretty hard plastic. That's what you're going to want to determine is just find a, a good mounting point. As you can see on the inside, it sits flat. So when you pull a nut and your horn assembly together, it holds nice and tight. So from here, we're ready to put the final, final touches together on the inside. Hook your micro compressor back up. Tuck your wires, make sure to, if you have looser holes, not to let these slide back in while you're doing so. Close everything back up, set your screws. and tighten it down. I was careful with mine the first few times with a, I used a ratcheting screwdriver and didn't want to strip these out, but they seem to be pretty resilient. I've taken this apart countless times at this point. Back one's always the worst because it's further down in there. Now that everything's tight, you make sure that your compressor's in there. In some cases, this is where you would have used some type of adhesive sealant. 
or epoxy or hot glue, whatever, to get it to stay. I like to be able to take mine apart. As you see, it holds pretty well. The important thing is we now have those posts to which we, I like to put my battery in at this point for ballast. You have your posts that if you line up properly, will slide directly on. Be careful not to push them obviously back into the into the housing because then you got to start all over, take it back off. And from here, a lot of people will just be ready to go with this setup and they'll put a washer, a lock washer, and your nut on. However, since I have a dual horn setup and this is the same post I use to mount off of, what I have to do is I put a nut on and it's really just acting not only as a holding piece, but as a spacer. So I get those on. And I tighten them down. It's worked a lot better with a deep well, but this works. Tighten those down. And from there, you have your initial setup. And if, if this is all you want to do and that's this will make you happy, then you take your lighter, heat up your ends. Shove them on there. Some people like to use um, something to hold those on there. I haven't found the need to. They don't seem to come off with compression. The barbs seem to hold. And from here, you're really, you're set up. Unfortunately for me, not really unfortunately, uh, I was looking for a little bit more train sound rather than that, uh, that highs and mids noise. So that's why I went and got two bigger horns. All this stuff came out of my garage, so I didn't really buy it. Uh, I think these with a compressor and hose were like 119. These were probably somewhere around 100 bucks or just under for that and the compressor. Um, so what I wanted essentially was some lows and a little bit more mid range. And so I took these horns and tried to figure out where they would look best. And I was kind of limited by my options. But I found that they look pretty cool, mounted right about there. From which I determined I would have to find a way to get that to mount up like that. So I got these L brackets to kick out and mount to. But I found that if I put them on directly behind that nut or even directly on the um, plate, that I wouldn't be able to get my mounting screws in without hitting the posts. So my solution to that was to throw two more nuts on as spacers and kick the mounting or the. It's important to remember that every single person's build is going to be a little bit different. But in my case, I'm using a multi-horn setup with three inputs and one output. So using these T-mounts, I found that I can get three out of one. And one of the efficiency things that you'll have to also come across through trial and error with your own build is that I found that mine mounts up really nicely inside this, this mounting plate that I've uh, built. And so I get it to hold on by sticking my two side mounts for my external horns or my additional horns. So I place these on there to get that mounting T to hold. And in yours, you won't have your piping pre-cut unless it's required uh, to fit because you can't get it afterwards. Missing a bolt. Is it in there? Yep. I mount those on, and then as I crank them down, I usually grab my mounting plate so 
that doesn't spin with it. And this holds that T in there very securely so my hose doesn't look rigged, doesn't flop around, mounts up very nicely. So now we're ready to mount the horns. So you take your, your post, slide it in here. It's important to keep the ones that came with your, or with your horns because a standard quarter 20 will not fit in that hole. As you can see, it starts getting pretty tight. I throw my washer, my lock nut, and my hex nut on there. Get it hand tight. Take the wrench of your choice. Keep cranking until it's tight. There we go. Next, slide it into the slot. Line it up. Same thing on the other side. Washer. Lock washer nut. It's important on these because you these have a lot of weight. They're obviously a lot longer being mounted on the back. A little heavier. You don't want them to fall and droop. Tighten it down. Then from there, you can use the leverage of the horns to kind of get your mounting brackets to line up and look like how you want them to. And we're just about done. From here, I determined that I wanted my main hose to go into my first T that's mounted down here. So I keep that end up. Slide it on there. And what I did was I realized 50% of my power is going to split off in either direction. So I wanted that 50, main 50% 50 to go to my largest horn to get that lower tone that I was looking for. So I cut a short piece, did a 90 degree bend over here. Slide that on. Make sure it's not kinked in any way. Perfect, let that cool down. And from the other side, I did a short piece and another T to a piece just long enough to fit the barb on the horn and the barb on the 3 8 fitting. This one we definitely have to heat up so it slides on in. There we go. And then your last one. So from here, and I actually ran that under the wrong way. So I have to heat it up. I like, to, I like this to go over, keep it out of the way of your trigger. And from there, that's how you can pipe that. You can do that differently to get different sounds. If you want to throw more power to these, less to these, 
you wire it a little differently or run the hoses a little differently, but here we are. Thanks for watching, guys.